busy work meeting and my phone exploded suddenly with calls, kind of in frustration. I set up a new account somewhere else with no contacts in it and not really knowing what to do or who to email, I just fired an email off to my own account, to the hacker, that's what I addressed it as. And I just said, you know, I can't believe what you've done. <laughs> Can I please at least have my contacts back? Who are you? And it was just a kind of way of venting my frustration really, but I was really surprised when sort of less than 10 minutes later, this email response pops up in this new account and it's from myself, you know, it's from my address. Someone is sitting inside my account and waiting to email me back and it just said, you know, I'll give you your contacts back for 500 quid. And I wrote back saying, one, I don't have 500 quid. Two, I would have no guarantee that you would give it back to me even if I did pay you the 500 quid. And three, do you ever feel even slightly bad about what you're doing? And um, I didn't expect to reply and instantly I got another one and just said, you know, it's better than robbing people on the streets. You know, I don't really have a choice about this. Oh, well, that makes it all right then. Good morning, Joanna. It just feels, it must have felt really creepy. It does feel really weird because you've lost all of your contacts, so you can't really be sitting there emailing anyone else. And the only person you can email is your old account, and this person's writing back to you. And we ended up having the exchange of about sort of nine or ten emails, almost instantaneously debating mm. this person's morality. And they're just sitting inside your account. You have no idea where they are, who they are, what their intentions are, or, or what they could do with all of your personal information that's, that's in there. It's really quite And this person weird. had been sending messages to what? All your contacts about something that wasn't happening to you? Yeah, they said, they sent out a message to 5,000 contacts in my address book Gosh. saying I needed some money desperately to be able to get home after being held up at gunpoint. Mm. Um, and, you know, they just literally blanked that out to everyone. And the, the thing that got me was that it was all of my elderly, non-internet savvy, sort of often like maybe kind of migrant friends who were responding to that, who couldn't see through it being a scam. They were the ones who were most worried about me and most likely to go across and, and send the money. How did you resolve it in the end? Well, that's the problem that really struck me is that, you know, you sort of feel completely powerless because I tried instantly to get hold of Google and there is no one you can Google contact. Google yeah, it's a G account. I should say it's a Gmail account. Yeah. Um, and I literally kind of tried to contact them. There is no phone number to call for this kind of problem. I sat on the phone and got hung up on a couple of times. Google's head office um, refused to answer anything that I was addressing to, even yeah. when I said I was a journalist and wanted to write about it. And I think that really got me because Google and Gmail makes a lot of money on you know the idea that it is a very the human face of the web it's a friendly company you mm. know that's that's why we like it mm. and the idea that you couldn't actually talk to someone afterwards was was quite difficult and um, we have got a statement from Google and I'll just read it out as well um, a Google spokesman saying at Google we take online security very seriously we're always developing technologies to help protect our users and last week launched the good to know campaign to educate on the steps all internet users can adopt to keep themselves safe online mm. so Tony how Often is this sort of thing happening? Sadly, it's becoming increasingly common. Um, the mm -hmm. content of the email go that goes out varies quite a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, in Rowena's case, it was a, a kidnap email. Uh, in other cases, we've seen people who claim, oh, I've lost my passport, I've lost my bag with my phone in it. There's normally a good reason given why they can't use their mobile phone and are resorting to an email. Uh, and it always creates a sense of urgency in order to try and get friends to send money quickly. OK, so um, how, how does it happen? How do they get in there? Well, by far the easiest way is to somehow get your password. Uh, and there's a number of ways they can do that. Uh, very often, just by watching over your shoulder in coffee shops or on the train uh, or in an internet cafe. Um, they can also have quite a good guess by looking up personal information on social networking sites and finding out your hobbies, the names of your family, the names of your pets. Mm. Uh, and failing that, they can res resort to technical methods and phishing emails. So you can get an email that says your account is about to be closed, enter your details here to stop it. And of course, the details go to the criminal. Or in a very worst case, they'll actually put some malware on your computer which looks for when you send your password and sends it to the criminal. So did you end up paying £500 or what happened to Rona? No, I just wrote back and said I've got no guarantee you'd send me the money. Um, you know, I have no intention of giving this money to you at all. What happened was that I had um, a friend of a friend who worked at Google 
um, really helped me out. And it didn't take very long when they sat down to do it. But I'm not sure if they would have done that if I wasn't a journalist or if they, they weren't. Could they were they able to track it. down the perpetrator? At all? No, and that's the thing is that I, you don't really think that anything's going to happen with this because there wasn't a huge amount of money stolen. The police don't give it a huge amount of time. They don't have the resources. You know, these are often kind of scams that are in other countries. And Google has no formal means of joining up with the police, as far as I can see. But the thing I would really like to make clear here is that even though the kind of physical resources weren't taken off me, there's a psychological oh, yeah. Yeah. impact that's yeah. going on there. I mean, if someone's got your email account, that hacker, after they knew I was writing about it, um, sent me quite a lot of threatening messages oh, afterwards gosh. saying, you know, not to put too fine a point of it, you're an ungrateful bitch. Um, you know, you don't don't do that. If you if you write to the press about that and publish the things you're planning to, um, I will let the world know your secrets. I've got copies of all your emails. Oh, it's I mean, horrid. You know, it's just however unlikely it is that that person is going to be doing those things. Yes. The point is, they could.